Hello and welcome. Today is the uh, 31st day of May 2017. My name is Derek. Welcome. Let's uh, take a look at the altcoin XBY, extra bytes, and using the chart from the C forward slash CEX exchange, uh, the cryptocurrency exchange, and uh, we're looking at a half day chart or 12 hour time frame. Each one of these candles represents that many hours. So the month of May, relatively simple pattern. I wish I could show this on a log scale, but I can't. However, a situation in which it went from 250, just a little bit before here, down to 81. Oh, how does that person feel who sold it down to 81? And then to go up to this area in here, correcting many, many periods through time, a few days, and then it breaks out. So long, long, long correction from the 726 handle as it goes down quite decently all the way down to 250 that's when i talked about it last if you're looking for something really cheap well price action at 725 almost tripling and on a short term not showing much of a sign yet that it wants to uh retrace we'll look at the situations for the four possible situations i think will happen from here but before we do that i want to focus on the volume that this is trading within and each one of these numbers represented from the line indicates how many Bitcoin were traded. So as it's starting off, we can see the numbers 10, 14, 29, 17, 15, 44, 45, 45. So therefore, it really picked up some steam on starting with a large, large, large green candle. Now, now, why did it get so big like that? Well, my my video earlier was how bullish the pattern was looking when it was in the first little bit of May during this uh, time correction in here. I was talking about how beautiful this pattern was looking and how it should play it to 500. Well, 500, it got up to 500 and then it just kept going. And when you don't resist where you're supposed to, fast move to next level, next level 750. And even though it says 726, it did reach 750 on other on another exchange. And now the volume on the current run. The first two on the start of the rally, four and five, followed by 12, seven, seven, 24, 19. Oh, so we're at the period uh, within the volume, like we were before the big candle even went uh, green back in here. So it's pretty much the similar, at least in comparison, within this volume. Let's uh, switch this chart up a little bit and go back another month from April up until now. So a two month duration, this is now the daily chart. And before in April with the six volume, that was its high. That was its high volume then. And then in May, the green candle that doesn't do much in here this one here 22 and of course that sparked the rally three consecutive days of 21 just nothing the next day well a little higher than what it was at nine then 25 on a day which had sellers and buyers a lot of uncertainty for people those who sold that day oh they weren't happy no nope. Those who bought, they were. And then it follows through 47, 58, 93. So here we're in a situation where on the bottom, the day I made the video where it got down to the 250 area, two and three fifths was the volume. Right now it's standing at 45. So therefore, we've looked at it, the volume. I'm looking towards this higher volume again, maybe in 100 Bitcoins traded again for me to state, okay, I'm at toppy volume. Although it still can top. It's got decent volume as it is. 
But let's look at the scenarios. No, scenario number one. And that would be a pullback uh, to around the four to 500 area. And that would create that of a uh, cup and handle formation. So somewhere down to here. So a move that would come either here and then back towards this level. And again, it could even come down to this four number. And a move down here, and then once you start to move back to this area, it's more likely again that you take it out. But when I have a situation where a big high is formed, like it was in May, and then it has a good correction, many days, many levels down, which was the case in here, down at this bottom, it has a 3x gain to this high, and so fast in just five days, every day a green candle. Well, it does make sense that you're going to have some sort of resistance. But last time, you were able to buy at like 250, 3, 4. Hey, yeah, maybe you might get 4 now. That's what this would be saying. The cheapest you're probably going to get is 4, but don't even count on that. There's a good chance it'll be somewhere around 5. If, of course, you're going to get a retracement. That shows a profitability you can have by selling at these tops. Where do you sell? You sell in here. Where do you buy back? You buy back around 5, 550. It's profiting. And then on the way up, yeah, you sell around 1400, 1200, 1300, 15. And then you're going to buy back between 750 and 1000. And 750, really. That's what I would state. A move from 750 on the break up to 15. If it goes there, it's a decent chance you can sell at 15 and buy back at 750. And well, technically, buy exactly what you did before. And there's your profits locked in or buy twice as many tokens. But that's scenario number one. Let's go through number two. And that would be that of a failed rally, which would uh, create a double top. And a fa failed rally is what's we're not going to find support in the key area, which would, well, I stated in scenario one, four to five. And this one just goes back to two, which then becomes a scary situation that this might not even hold. Or if we come down here, situation where you might get a, make a lower high and then you'd be looking to break down. That would be the second scenario that would come into play. There's your risk right there, basically. The chances of that aren't that good, which is why I look at the risk reward probability, profitability odds that this is why it makes it a good play. But again, this is why you need to be profit taking and it's in an area where it's a profit taking level. Let's move on to scenario number three. And that would be a correction through time, which means, okay, we're in the area where, we're, where it's supposed to be resistance, which is another way of saying stop going higher. And when you say stop going higher, well, that's what you mean price correction down, 500, 600, and anything like that, or 400, uh, 550. But 600 isn't that much of a fall if it's only down to here. And if it goes between any type of 600 to 750 range for like four, five, six, seven days kind of deal, that would be or qualify as a correction through time. Because if you're selling now, and this is what you're going to get, you'll buy a bit at 600 and maybe you'll just cave in and buy back at 700 or 680 later. If your plan was to buy here and sell back because your purpose, if you're selling here again from the first scenario, is to try to get it back probably around 500. But if this still sideways, it's not going to touch 500. You're not going to buy back. And you could be like, oh, what a good sell it was. It goes down to six. Great time to sell. Up to seven. Down to six. Up to seven. Up to nine. Oh, geez. I wish I didn't sell now at 720 or 749. So that's really within the correction through time. And now let's go over the fourth scenario. And that is that of no resistance. Oh shit, this thing is going up to 1500 because when an area that's supposed to be resistance isn't, yeah, we're going to the next point. And that's gonna make people who sold in here cry. And how, and how about the person who sold at 81? How, how's he going to, or she, going to feel about that transaction on the event, of course, going to 50? And this is why when I play 
this type of strategy are talking about sell places, buy back. Okay, you're selling the 700s and you buy below 600 to 500. Sweet profits, yes, when it works. And if you sell like everything now and it goes up, well, you, you got some profits. So it's not the worst of situations, but you're losing out on gains. And that's why when you hold tokens back, if, if you were to sell everything at 750 and then buy it all back at 500, Oh, you look like a genius now. Everyone else who bought and holds, well, when they go well, from 500 to 750 back down here and again, they're in the exact same position. Whereas you, when you sold at 750, bought at five and you're back to 750, you're in a winning position. But if you're wrong and the go thing goes up to 14, 1500, those who hold, they're doing pretty good. Those who sold, not quite as good. So those would be the uh, key different scenarios that would come into play. I could tell you now that if it were to do this scenario, that's exactly what I'd be looking for is a 1500 target and a decent level where I would be looking to profit take because I wouldn't like the chances too much of it taking out that point. And I would realize that selling at 1500 and buying some of it back at a thousand and some of it back at 750 would be very plausible as well on this situation of taking place. It's always going to be about adjusting to the message of the market. What does it tell you at a current point? And if it plays out exactly each step the way through, well, it's going to be easy, but there's going to be curveballs and loopholes. And it's your best best you can do for yourself to understand those loopholes, understand the different situations, reading the story, reading the message of the market. In poker, if you want to be able to read bluffs or find out if someone's got the most super strong hand, you try to figure the story out based on betting patterns and how things are moving. Same thing in here. Try to figure out how the story is going. And when you understand it, that's when you can be able to make profitable plays because of your understanding of the story. Alrighty, thank you for tuning in and have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.